Yeah, thank you for being with us. Look, as I mentioned to you before the break, this is something that has never, ever, ever been discussed. And thank God it's going to be tonight. As I've already told you yesterday, I toured again the bushfire devastation for miles around Batemans Bay. Batemans Bay is on the south coast of New South Wales and the Yoruba Dallas Shire, which I might add is 85% national park. A beautiful spot. Beaches, seafood, oysters. It's 140 miles, 226 kilometres from Sydney. Population about 11,000. Much of it, a bomb site. But equally, much of the community intact. Visit them, spend up, support them. The point we want to make here is this. Very simple. As Jacob and I drove into Mojo, Mogo yesterday, there in their thousands, you can see them, look at them, they were silent black sentinels. Sentinels to destruction. In many ways, they are the agents themselves of that destruction. They're eucalypts. They survive, nothing else does. In an outstanding piece of writing in the most recent Spectator magazine, Jeremy Griffith, an Australian biologist, the founder of the non-profit World Transformation Movement, wrote a headline to his story. It said, eucalypts are incinerators from hell, dressed up as trees. Every farmer will tell you this, writes Jeremy Griffith. Evidence suggests that eucalypts originally emerged from our Australian rainforests and then quickly spread and conquered virtually the whole of Australia, with botanists recognising that every variety of plant community in Australia, be it heathland, scrub, open woodland or forest, is dominated by a variety of eucalypt. And there they are. You just saw them. Charred trunks, sentinels to the disaster they've helped create. As Jeremy Griffith said, eucalypts are incinerators from hell dressed up as trees. He's joined us tonight in an issue which I believe is at the heart of this bushfire crisis. Jeremy, thank you for your time, but why haven't we woken up to this? Uh, living in denial, it, it, we love, tr we love our, our, our gum trees, but uh, that's blocking us from seeing the real, fi the real problem right in front of us. You've said here these things actively cultivate fire. You said they have very waxy, oily, flammable leaves, which they're constantly shedding. This is, of course, about the stuff on the floor to accommodate beds of fire fueling litter at their base and peeling bark that flies through the air as lit tapers. And this is what people are talking, the ember fires. They said here they could see it coming through the sky from one tree to the other, but they didn't know what was happening, to start new fires many kilometres ahead. And as you say, the Blue Mountains west of Sydney are so named because the oil in the eucalypts along the mountain range is constantly evaporating and creating a blue haze. You say eucalypts are essentially fire-feeding incinerators that generate so much heat when they catch fire that when one burns, you say, so the others go. Its radiant heat evaporates the oils in the neighbouring eucalypts, creating a flammable gas which ignites as a fireball. And so the crowns of the trees explode. That's what everyone tells me they were hearing, with fire one after the other triggering a crown fire, a wave of exploding eucalypt canopies that race through the Australian bush like a tornado. That is precisely, not knowing what they were talking about, that people said. They heard that. By the way, it's brilliantly written. That's it the is, other thing. That's really good prose. But this is what they heard. I, a tornado. I don't know what you do. I, I, um, I think, you know, given that they dominate, uh, they're the dominant tree in Australia, uh, what do you do about In the world. Uh, I think the first... The first issue is to, to face the truth of, of, of the, the real nature of eucalypts. I mean, honestly, um, if, if eucalypts were, 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 were a human, you, you'd lock them away as psychopaths. I mean, they're, they're ruthless killers. And that's what we've got to face. I love trees. I grew up in the bush and, and my parents actually started the Burrandong Dam Arboretum. When I was a 16-year-old, I was carrying buckets of water to, to start the... It's just now a famous uh, arboretum, a sort of a plant zoo. So I love trees. But this is really serious. There's destruction that's going on. The trauma in people's lives. Yeah, it, is, it is a war zone, exactly as you've described, Alan. It's like a bomb's gone off. And, and it's right down the full length of this coast. When you fly over the east coast of Australia, what you see is this endless sea of eucalypts and you see houses right in amongst them and, and people love the trees and, and, and 
there's just got to be a, a, a reality check. We've got to face what the problem is. We've got to stop this madness. We've got to stop all the, all the devastation and, and the heartache and the pain. So we've got to deal with eucalypts. And, and the first thing is to face the, the extent of what they really are. And, and they are. They, they are um, incinerators from hell dressed up as trees. Should we have laws that yes. prevent people yes. from yes. building in, in some of these areas? Yeah. I, I, Where the eucalypts are. Well, <clears throat> I, I'm, I think um, if we start by first of all facing the, the true nature of eucalypts and realising that how dangerous they are, then I think from there we, we can start to because there's got to be a post mortem here and we've got to get it right from here on. We've got to stop this. It's a really serious problem, the eucalypts in Australia. So uh, to overstate it, I, I think that um, we'll get where we'll get to eventually is that even. The idea of reforesting, uh, 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 revegetating uh, parts of the eucalypt forest because they're so dangerous, they've got to be sectioned off and into a, into an area and very closely managed. So you made the point that Aboriginal fire, you, I think your words were, Aboriginal fire management worked brilliantly. We've ignored all of that. Yes, yes. Well, that that's it's an amazing situation. Well, how did this happen? You see, eucalypts originally emerged from the from the um, uh, from the rainforest. And, and they just spread and took over everything. So the question is, why did that happen? How did that happen? Well, they happen to have uh, epicormic buds, which sort of live in the, in the, um, uh, in the sapwood underneath the, the bark. And, and it so happens that they can survive fire when virtually other, no other species could. So they happen to have... Now, you, you, um, lightning strikes will cause fire, but something else... To be as successful, to have spread from this, because they're such a chaotic species, they're not nicely designed like a pine tree or yet an oak tree. They're chaotic. They're, they're, they're an upstart species. They've hit upon some some breakthrough um, um, adaption. And that... the Indigenous Australians in the last fortnight have spoken about this. There's an outfit called Fire Sticks Alliance, and their coordinator is this fellow Oliver Costello, and he's been very outspoken. Of course, no one listens to him. No one takes any notice. They know everything. He says, as an Aboriginal man learning about fire in my own community and the cultural practices around that, how we burn for the culture of the land to support the country and plants and animals, very important. We've been spending a bit of time all over Australia looking at country which is really sick. Even if there are fire agencies and land management, often they're not burning in the right way for the country. We're seeing what happens when you don't burn the right way. You end up with a lot of fuel in the landscape and when you've got extreme conditions like we have now, you've got huge fires. It's common sense. I mean, you can't have a fire without fuel. You try and start a fire without fuel, they go on about climate change. You're kidding me. You can't have a fire without fuel, but we've ignored all of that. He says indigenous knowledge of the land should be better utilised. That's what you've said. Yeah, well, fire management. So what happens? So these, these, uh, this, this, this variety of plant comes out of the, uh, plant comes out of the, out of the rainforest and it's got this unique ability to, to survive fly, fire because of this epicormic buds un hidden under the bark. And, and, and so uh, they actively cultivate fire, encourage it, because they know it'll destroy the competition. They can survive and, and the competition can't. Okay. And, mm. But then you, there's one other element missing. How, how did they get to get this fire? It's like lightning strikes is not going to happen enough. So the Aboriginals have been here 40 to 60,000 years ago, mm -hmm. and in that time they've adapted this fire management where they're continually burning it off. They kept the, fire, the forests relatively well, open. Hang on, we've created all the, I mentioned 15,000 national parks. You can't get in. We lock the parks up. We, we, we lock up the fire trails. And here are these eucalypts. You've seen the pictures there. They survive, as you said, they survive. Everything else dies. The whole floor where I've been is completely destroyed and the eucalypts are still standing. You have written this. This extraordinary affinity with fire means eucalypts have to be viewed as extremely dangerous incinerators that must be kept away from residential and commercial zones. I mean, is it too late? They're everywhere. I, it is, because it, it, I don't... I mean, I, I could sit here and start listing uh, suburbs where, where they go right into the bush, where the houses are abut uh, the forest. And the forest is obviously going to be overwhelmingly eucalypt. I mean, it, it, there might be other species occasionally, but overwhelmingly eucalypt, don't they? Yes, so but I mean, when John Stanhope, after the Canberra fires and John Stanhope was the uh, Chief Minister of the ACT, he said, we've got to stop uh, planting native plants because, as you said, they're fire traps. Well, oh, that was the end of John Stanhope. 
don't yeah. don't express such anti-religious views around here. Yeah. Yeah. But you have written a brilliant piece here. You said, Greenies, this, this man's written this, Jeremy, Greenies should take note. We have to view eucalypts as being like dangerous crocodiles, planted tail down, ready to destroy lives and our world, with estimates of over a billion animals having been killed by this summer's fires. Now, where are these people? There, 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 there's the crocodile. He did a little cartoon for his story, you see. There's the eucalypt, and it is basically a crocodile in the forest, and the forest's full of them. I'm trying to get people... We've got to wake up here. We've got to wake up and realise just how dangerous they are, and, and then we can start thinking about how, how we're going to manage it. I mean, um, non-eucalypt fires are, are, are bad enough and destructive enough, but, but, but eucalypt forest fires are just so incredibly intense and, and, and ferocious and destructive. They're a whole different ball game, and we've got to view them like that. That's what you but, said, but eucalypt say, forest let's fires. Let's say you're the, you're the Trump. You can, order, you can do anything... Yeah. You have absolute power over this. What would you do? I would divide, which is sort of what's been done, I'd divide the east coast of Australia, the big, you know, endless forest of eucalypts, into, into big sections, into, into blocks. And with big clear areas between those blocks, I'd have beautifully managed and, and, and inserted uh, fire trails right through them. So that... And then I'd have... Um, well, they're talking about having uh, satellites being able to spot fires as soon as they emerge and then you have an immediate response from, uh, from firefighters. So th this is sort of sectioned off uh, parts of uh, the, the forest into sort of contained, managed regions. And, and that's sort of what, what, what's got to happen. We've got to... It just can't be one endless thing. And, and, and the other thing that I said earlier, I think it's going to be in the long term, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing one to try to think about and, and face, is that we will um, um, th that we'll even consider um, uh, revegetating regions that are that are dominated by eucalypts with with, with non fire prone species. Can I just interrupt you there to see to, to to make the point though that the horses bolted. Now I'm just looking at figures here on national parks in Australia, and these are dominated, as you've written in your story, by eucalypts. New South Wales has seven million hectares of national parks, seven million hectares. Victoria, 18% of Victoria is national parks. 4 million hectares. South Australia, 21 million hectares of national parks. Tasmania, 20% of Tasmania is national parks. What you're saying is they're dominated by eucalypts. I mean, it's an inferno waiting to overtake us. Absolutely. 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 It's, uh, and we're just sitting there nonplussed as if... Uh, there's no threat there, and, and we're just going to get... I mean, the eucalypt forests, um, you know, they're a wasteland. They're, they're basically um, uh, non-existent part of our continent because we can't live near them, wildlife can't live within them. It's a suicide That's existence. Yes. Sooner or later, a generation or two, they'll get wiped out. Yes. I mean, uh, lyrebirds in the rain gullies or, or um, swamp wallabies. I mean, there, there was over a billion animals killed. Oh, they, can't, they can't move as quickly as the fire. No, and the birds... The koala colonies have gone. You yeah. see, this is the point. I mean, basically, it's the combination, of course, of drought and, you know, there's been no rain and so on, but you bring all those, that chemical combination together, and you go, well, we've got... You've you said here, eucalypt forest fires are so frequent, ferocious and destructive that humans can't live near them and they're an extremely dangerous habitat for wildlife. You've said there's got to be a complete change of mindset when thinking about eucalypts that recognise their true nature. Now, out there, they're saying, oh, Scott Morrison, you've got to do more about climate change. Scott, tell them to go and jump. This is the issue. This is the man we've got to be talking to, and yet you've got national parks all over the countryside you can't access, and they're dominated, they're dominated aren't they, by eucalypts. W would, it be, would it be possible to manage all of these forests, if, if we allowed more fire trails and, and all the rest of it, well, uh, and, and therefore be start. Re reduce the, uh, the danger. Be Is start. that possible or not? I, I, I'm, I'm sure that all these fires have been doing such an incredible job. Oh, yeah. And, and, the odds. It, and they've got a lot of experience. I was down trying to help a friend of mine, Tim McCarty Snape, look after his property, and, and the fires got within two kilometres and, and, from destroying... It, it, and, and, 
and um, I think they know what that what they want, and what they would, and I really do think that what they'd like is a managed, sectioned off parts. That, see that fire that came up, uh, the that fire that came up the the, the, the Natai from from the Warragamba Dam, and that was going to come all the way up to Mittagong and take out Mittagong. There's no break in between. I've got one on top of my farm. I can tell you, it's still burning. Saturday's going to be a nightmare day for everyone down there. Is worried about Friday and Saturday. There was a dreadful fire last night in Canberra. The fire at Maruya hasn't been put out. It's extraordinary. See, you've said this, and we'll, we'll end it here. Eucalypts were planted overseas with gusto, and they are responsible for the fires in Portugal and Spain. And it's not just Australia. They're everywhere it's in fires. America, too. Everywhere in America. And we planted the eucalypts you've written were planted overseas with gusto because they're fast growing and they've got hard wood. But the world is starting to wake up to this crocodile in their mist, midst. And you quoted David Bowman, a forest ecologist at the University of Tasmania. What the hell have humans done? We've spread a dangerous plant all over the world. You're a star. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're listening. I hope someone else is. Hey, it's, a very, it's a new experience to everyone watching, I'm sure. Jeremy Griffith, basically, telling the story that has never been told.